conversation because guess what? Guess what I'm bringing back? We're going to call no, this like, we're going to say retro style, right? So now, oh, you didn't throw anything yet. Okay, good. So, we're going back to our lovely, lovely unit circle. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, previously we talked about, last class period, we talked about a unit vector, right? Mm -hmm. Now, a unit vector could have any sort of um, direction, but the one thing we knew about a unit vector was that, Marco, it had a magnitude of 1, correct? So therefore, let's say we draw a unit vector. No matter what the magnitude is of my unit vector, we know that the magnitude of my unit vector is going to be 1. Therefore, the terminal point is going to have to land on the unit circle, right? No. OK. So we'll call this u. Now remember, u, when you take the vector over its magnitude, equals, uh, well, I'm sorry. That is going to be your unit vector. And we also know that the absolute value of u equals 1. All right? So that's what we know. That was magnitude, not absolute value. That is magnitude. Did, you say absolute value? Did I say absolute value? The magnitude of u equals 1. Okay. Nothing with absolute value. Okay. Like, My bad. So this is how we get our unit vector, right? Our unit vector is u over abs or the absolute value. The magnitude of u, and the magnitude of u in this case is 1 for this vector. Now, let's say we want to find out a vector v. <coughs> okay? So we have a vector v. We're going to write v as a linear combination a, ai plus bi, where a and b are your, are your uh, scalars. Okay? Just like v1 and v2, we're going to use a and b. All right? Now, um, let's go ahead and take a look at. Uh, what we would go ahead and do with this. First of all, let's go back to the unit circle. And this is why it's going to be very important for us to understand. If I was going to look at these terminal points, right? currently we know that they're x, comma y, right? That was your x, you know, your coordinate points. But how did we figure out what they were of x equals y? How do we figure out what x equals and what y equals? So what we did is we created a right triangle. All right? And we said that this distance, the x equals what? This distance is what? Cosine of an angle theta. This distance is sine of theta. Right? This tells you what this distance. To find this distance, you take the sine of your theta. To find this distance, you find your cosine of your theta. Yes? So therefore, what we can state is um, we can now write a vector as cosine of theta, sine of theta as a unit vector. Okay. Now, here's what I want you guys to get to it, all right? So here's I have a vector that's going to represent this unit vector here, sine of theta and cosine of theta. If I have a vector that shares, if I have a vector that's on this unit vector but does not have the same magnitude, let's say it has a magnitude of 5, right? If I just multiply this, if I multiply this by the magnitude, I'm still going to have the exact same angle, right? This angle and that angle still have the exact same angle, right? Right? So if I can find cosine of theta, sine of theta, if all I need to do is multiply it by the magnitude of my angle v, my new vector v, right? They're still going to be remain. They're still going to be to remain the same exact angle. It's still going to be cosine over sine of my angle theta. Now, here this is in component form. I can also write this in vector form, or by distributing this. So I could have magnitude of v. Cosine of theta, um, comma, 
magnitude of V sine of theta. All right. And then if I wanted to write my unit vector, or write, want to write this um, in my component form of V, I could also write this in, my, in this format. Okay, now this is going to be your, vec your unit vector. If I have a new magnitude, I'm going to multiply by the magnitude. So here's my new magnitude. I just multiply by the new magnitude, which I can write as v equals I can also write it as a linear combination. Thank you. OK. So I can take this. If I take a magnitude and multiply it by my original unit vector, if I take my magnitude, multiply it by my unit vector, I'm going to get the exact same thing. But you guys can see I can write this as a linear combination. I know this kind of looks a little crazy for right now, but you're going to get to my point. So now, how would I find out what this angle is? Well, if I was going to take this angle, we know we have to do tangent of theta equals y over x, right? But now we're representing our y. We know y is represented to the sine of theta. And tangent represents our cosine of theta. So we can say tangent of theta equals sine theta over cosine of theta, right? We also know that by, uh, um, by our, um, our quotient identities. Now, we can multiply. If I multiply this by my magnitude of my vector on top and bottom, what I have is this is going to be your um, sine is the same thing as your b. See, if you guys notice this, I know this looks kind of crazy. But the magnitude of v times cosine of theta, that's just your coefficient of i, right? Your magnitude of v times sine of b theta is just your coefficient of j, which is b. So if I multiply these across, I'm going to have magnitude of v of sine of theta all over the magnitude of v times cosine of theta. Well, this is your coefficient of your j, which is equal to b. Over here, your coefficient of your a or a coefficient of your i, which is a. So therefore, to find the tan or to find the angle of a vector, you can simply just go ahead and take your tangent of the theta equals b divided by a. Okay? So you might say, well, Mr. McLogan, you just went through way too much information to tell us that tangent of an angle equals b over a.